Bafana Bafana versus Morocco. Uh, it's an African qualifier. It's one of the games that's actually on the uh, the calendar. Now we've played all four games in regards to the FCON, although it was as a game just for pride because we already had qualified. But it's an interesting game, other all. I think we're playing for pride. I think also the spirit of Clive Barker was with us today. The kind of football we were playing, my goodness. Uh, it was a, a good fixture. Feast of football. So much things to talk about. So much players to look at. And a very, very good performance, if I may, must admit. But anyways, welcome, welcome again. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Disky channel. Thank you so much for the support you guys keep showing me. Thank you for those guys who keep coming back and showing the love and support. But once again, I do need to remind you, do, please don't forget to subscribe, to like, share the, the videos with your friends. And also don't forget to click on that notification bell whenever we drop a new video. So yeah, let's get to it, man. Where to start? Um, look, this was a very, very interesting encounter because, um, as you know, uh, when it comes to FCON, we've already qualified. But obviously, this this game was just to finish off the round of matches and also decide who's going to take the number one spot. I'm not too sure if that's going to affect uh, any, like maybe they when they put you into the ports, if you're going to be pitted against the best in Africa or number two, whatever the case may be. But obviously winning these kind of games kind of really sets the tone in understanding what is Hugo Bruce is trying to uh, establish, what kind of philosophy is he trying to instill in the national team and what kind of ball does he, uh, he, he what kind of football does he want to play, which is a glimpse of what I saw today. I think for the first time in a lot of matches where we've played uh, in, in not in patches, but I don't want to say in, play, in patches, but there, there hasn't been a clear identity in regards to the kind of football that we can play. Now, it's also a big match because, remember, this Moroccan side was the same team that played uh, in, the, in, the, um, uh, in the World Cup and came number four. The same team that beat Brazil 1-0. So they, they again showed time and time again that um, they are a very strong team. They didn't. It wasn't a fluke, you know. The, the, there's 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 actually some football being played in North Africa, and be, them being virtually a North African side. Uh, it, it tells you that we haven't had a good record against those sides. So today's encounter wasn't just a fixture, as much as pride and all these things. But there's a lot of nuances that in you know if you follow football a lot, you know, you'll actually understand how important this match was uh, to us as a football nation. And uh, what to expect in future because there's a lot of guys, new guys that are still going to be selected in the national team. And a lot of guys are playing for the Jay-Z. Obviously, they, they have to show uh, that why do they deserve a spot and why do they deserve a shot in actually going to, or the ticket going to FCON. But I want to focus on the game itself. And, oof, man, what a beautiful match of football. In the first 20 minutes, I'm actually proud to, you know, it, it's been a while when we've seen. And, you know, what I appreciate the most is the coach having a, a comment. But I'll talk about the coach at the end. I just want to mention this quote that he said. He had said that, look, we've played in empty stadiums a lot. And now I think it's because a lot of uh, 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 football lovers have lost faith in the national team because we failed to qualify a lot. And they haven't been winning the way maybe the nation would have, or we as, as, as a nation would have wanted them to win. But now, uh, he just left us with this comment, because today we have just have to show or win back the defense uh, support. Because now, as you saw, the tenant was quite good, as opposed to other previous matches. He showed that a lot of people were, were missing football, because obviously, you know, it's off-season now. And he didn't disappoint. To be fair here, uh, I'm not a fan of, of, of the coach uh, to some extent, obviously, when it comes to selections and all these things. But today, um, I, I think I'm one of the people he proved wrong as well, uh, regardless of the personnel, because obviously that can with that we can change. But obviously, starting with the lineup, I was quite shocked. I think for me, the the, the surprise that I was not quite sure how it would actually play out was Uobas. You know, obviously you have regulars, you have Uunjabulo Plom who can play in the same position he was playing. 
I think Luke Leroux is also there. So there are people who have featured in the, that the defensive uh, central pair uh, that maybe they could have given him maybe, you know, the last five minutes, ten minutes or so. But we don't know what he saw in training. We don't know what his technical saw in training. And <laughs> luckily enough, it worked. My goodness, he worked. This guy, for his debut, I saw a different player than he was at TX Galaxy. You can tell that this guy is hungry. This guy, he's composed. He's not intimidated. He feels, he, it's almost as, as if he's been playing with the team for the longest time. And it gives Abu Zwane, Pesita, Abu Makmamela much more of a better role because they are focused on creation and actually scoring these goals. And this is where the synergy comes from. And look, it's beautiful to watch in the first 20 minutes the way, the way they were detecting play, the way they were, you know, creating those triangles. And they were pressing as well. When they don't have the ball, they press them hard and high. And I think the Moroccans were very uncomfortable in the first 20 minutes. That's where the goal came in. And obviously, uh, for me, you know, you have to attack to, to be able to force your opponents to make mistakes. You have to be in those pockets, in those spaces and moments where you can actually make them. Because if they are sleeping, punish them. If these people are sleeping, punish them. And that's what we did. And we opened ourselves up very well or we set ourselves very well because psychologically now they're psyched out it's our home ground it's a home match it's our home ground and this is what i love with what i what the uh, what the guys how they've applied themselves you know there was a system that they followed because you could see now uh, when they have the ball you can actually tell what they want to do you've got utemba's one in that full role actually dictating uh, making the right moves. Mayambela as well, adding a bit of impetus. Because if Uzoane is not our uh, our man, they're very close to each other. Zwane has Mayambela, Pesita on the side. He, he, he's, milking, <laughs> he's milking that guy, I forgot his name, on the right. And either he cuts in or he knows what to do. He's crazy. He's very intelligent. Pesita is very intelligent. He's very smart. So he knows how to hold the ball, when to release, when to shoot, and when to beat your man. So... I mean, the experience that we have now with the young guys who have come in, it's a good mix. And that only tells you that the coach and the technical team, this time around, they got it right. I think for me, that's where my, 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 my observation analysis comes from, where you have to have a good mix, a good uh, 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 enough experience, and you have young players who have the right quality to give you whatever system that you're establishing. And this is what we saw today. But um, key players for me that I'd like to point out that I really felt they, they gave us the result or they helped us to really give us the good shape that we had today. Pesitao, for me, outstanding. Uh, he's, he's sharp, he's fit, he's on form. And as you can tell, his confidence is back. This is the line of Twitter that we know. He The, the Kev champion that we know. And he showed us today that this guy, if you have ever doubts about Pesitao, forget about it. Temba Zwane, as usual, dictating play, you know, the middle of the park that and playing that number 10, how he should be playing, showing the young ones. And sometimes his, 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 his strength is not pushed around very easily. He knows how to protect the ball very well. And the Moroccans didn't have answers to that. And these, these, these are the kind of things, I think, key points, individual battles, we won them very well. And it showed good to Ibaba, it's our home. And the body language from these guys today was very good. I mean, you know, you, know, you can... You know what they say, you create your own luck sometimes. And that's how I believe. Well, that's what I believe in football is. And th th we applied ourselves very well. I mean, even the second goal. First goal, sharp, it was a mistake. The second goal, we were again applying ourselves. We are in the 18th era creating chances. And Lipasa, right moment to finish it off. So for me, you know, even defensive-wise, man, you know, those moments, little moments where you have to, um, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, a 1v1, last minute tackles, don't just fall, don't just be pushed around. If you have to take the ball out, do that. Check them up. So they have to have other means of not being able to show that they can just come in and, and dictate or just get another goal however they would want. So in the middle, we, we are really aggressive and we are really compact and that's just what I love. Um, key moments, Mark Amel, I've already talked about him. Ronan Williams as well, good saves. But that goal, for me, I'm not saying it couldn't happen to any goalkeeper, but for me, uh, Ronan has those kind of mistakes. You know, uh, this is the Ronan Williams I'm talking about from Supersport, not the one from uh, Mamelodi Sundowns, because Sharp, 
we can argue that, look, those mistakes happen when you have a good defense that can protect you, but we can't protect you all the time. So for me, when you're playing against such Moroccans, Abu Ziyech, you've got Hakimi, those guys just need one moment to change the game. And we need him there because Gulai Pera, if you remember when we were under pressure at the time to win that game, he again created or considered such goals. So for me, I don't know if it was positioning at the time because I felt like he maybe could have a touch of that ball. But for me, yes, he saved us, but he does have such mistakes, especially at national level when he's playing with different guys apart from Mamelo Santos because he always has a, a, a good defense around him. So you never see him make so much uh, saves and, uh, you know, you never see such frailties. So for me, that's something I just wanted to talk about. Like, uh, it, It's something we always have to pay. That his quality does have that, you know, does have that moment where sometimes you're going to kill us one day, especially going to FCOT, where you actually have to win games uh, ugly and you need your goalkeeper to be there. You need to use the goalkeeper to save you, you know. But uh, another moment, ah, man, I don't want to talk about that too much because he, he, his work, you know, is to protect the defense. But we have to finish uh, those chances at some point. So, um, all around, the result is the most important thing. I think for us, being able to focus on the fact that he missed a chance where he was one on the goalkeeper doesn't really, um, you know, serve us much, especially where we're trying to look at the positives and where we are going as a team, as a national team. For me today, I want to look at it as, at a positive note where, they look, we did create chances, we missed ch chances as well. And the Moroccans really didn't pose any threat apart from them whipping crosses from the side and obviously beating us from the side and looking for that touch. So um, it's work in progress. We can never have it right all the time. But for me, I'm just happy with the sugar ball is in play. Now at least there's a bit of identity and a philosophy that we can identify with. So when he selects people, we already know what to expect because there's an expectation that we know. It's okay, Sharp. If you want to play... A, a, a free-flowing game, passing interplay, and you understand the kind of players that you have and the players that we know that can play that kind of football, and it actually is able to win us matches, especially going to the Afghan. I feel like um, there's a future there. There's a good um, there, there's good moment we can talk about it. So I just wanted to talk about the the game itself. This is a reaction for me. Um, look, looking at the game holistically, well deserved win. Um, we could have gotten more. Yes. And look, talk about the ref, like I said, that's a negative connotation as well. The ref really almost killed us in terms of the psychology of the game and how it was moving. But we stuck it through. Mentally, we were still there. We, it shows that there's a bit of preparedness, good camp. There's something good that they were doing. And that's something to celebrate, guys. So for me, that's all I have for you today. Please don't forget, like I said, uh, please continue to support your boy. Please don't forget to like, subscribe. And also click on that notification bell for every time when I drop a video like this. Thank you, Nyabonga. See you next time. Shop, shop.